the sheer sort of joy that people have the first time you see a white-tailed eagle, it's, it's pretty, pretty addictive, to be honest. The White-tailed Eagle Project started in 2019 in partnership with Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation and Forestry England. We released 29 birds to date and we are seeing pairs established across Southern England. So we've got three pairs that have well and truly established and we saw our first successful breeding pair. To see the first successful breeding pair is kind of surreal. Hard to believe it's really happened this early on in the project. The birds that bred were only three years old. White-tailed eagles typically breed at, at four or five. Remarkable that they even attempted to breed, let alone breed themselves. They built a nest, we thought that'd be it. And they started to show signs of, of courtship. We thought, okay, that'll be the end of it. And then they got to the point where they were laying an egg. Even when the egg hatched, we thought, well, maybe they won't be able to raise it. And here we are, and they've, they've done it. And that bird is flying around freely. It's fantastic. So since those are first birds were released in 2019, we've learned an enormous amount about how they're living in the landscape. You know, one of the most important things we need to understand is how all these birds are feeding. So we put a huge number of hours in observing these birds, trying to understand not only what are they eating, but how are they acquiring those meals as well. We've got somewhere near 500 observations of white-tailed eagles feeding in southern England. And that's really helping us build a picture of how these birds are likely to live within the landscape more generally. So their diet is made up predominantly of geese, coots and ducks, but also fish being the principal item when it's available. You know, that's a preferred item across southern England. With the release birds, we continue to provide food close to home until they're ready to leave on their own. We put out locally caught fish. So today they've got mackerel and they've got a carp. Try and keep it as fresh as possible. So if that means we have to freeze it, then we have to freeze it. Make sure you got your keys. You always got to make sure you got your keys, Ben. So they're all contributed to us by local fishermen, very generously. Caught for the eagles. Nick, could you kindly put my sunglasses on my face, please? We're just mimicking what happens in the wild. I'm obviously not an adult white-tailed eagle, but we supply food in the same way their parents do. So if these were wild-fledged juvenile birds around here, their parents would bring back food to their home territories. Either a nest site or perhaps a favoured perch and the juvenile once seen them arrive with food beg and that would prompt them to supply food. So we put the food on these tables when there aren't any birds around so they don't get used to us. Sometimes that means we have to go out at night. Other times we can go late in the evening like now when the birds have left. Put them all on these platforms, they're all raised up. You can see they're quite high. And that means the badgers and the foxes can't get on them. We've got three different platforms so all the eagles can get some food even when one of the more dominant birds is feeding. Not the best bit of a job actually. It's quite a smelly bit of a job. <laughs> the CCTV cameras allow us to understand how these birds are doing around the release area without disturbing them. larger females which can be considerably bigger and some of these males often sort of feed first. It doesn't matter where you put food, they always want to feed on the same one. And they're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so 
starting to see a number of pairs established on the south coast of England. So we've got at least three pairs now. And we're here today watching one of those pairs with the birds of Paul Harbour boat trips. Places like Paul Harbour are fantastic because all the food that they want lives in these environments. This is where they choose to come and breed, really, these kinds of habitats. There's a whole array of fish. There's lots of wetland birds, things like gulls and geese and ducks. All these species are critical for white-tailed eagles. My name's Steve. I work for Forestry England, but the project is led in partnership with Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation. So we started in 2019, a project aimed to reinstall this bird, white-tailed eagle, as a breeding species here on the south coast of England again. We are overwhelmed by numbers of positive messages we get about white-tailed eagles. So many people are so happy to see these birds, be it going over their garden during lockdown in 2020 and 2021, or on their estate or on their farm, and people are so excited to see this enormous bird back in this landscape once again. Last time this bird bred on the south coast of England was 1780, on a place called Culver Cliff. You can get an ice cream at the top of that hill now and, uh, and a very nice coffee. So it's an incredible feeling to know that that first white-tailed eagle chick has fledged in southern England after all these years of absence. It's had an incredible diet. Its parents have done really well, fed it principally on carp and on European eel, but also they've managed to forage bass from the coastal waters. And really fortunately, we were able to tag that bird as well. So it was fitted with a GPS device and would be fantastic to be able to follow that bird as it explores the wider landscape now it's fledged. We hope in the next couple of years that we'll start to see some more of these pairs breeding on the south coast of England and of course see some more pairs establish. The real objective of the translocation is to try and get that initial population somewhere around eight to ten breeding pairs and that's the level we feel at that point it could be self-sustaining. <laughs>